Hey Ford, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. I'm coming here to uh, talk about my 2021 Ford F-150 that I have on order. My goal was to be producing a bunch of content around this power boost. Now I know we're in this situation right now with microchip shortages, all that stuff. I get it. And that's why I'm addressing this video to Ford. I am going to tell you right now that I am very concerned with uh, Ford management at this point. Now, a lot of people out there are uh, kind of commenting frequently about, well, why are you so impatient? You can just wait. And, and I get it. I understand it. Uh, trust me, I do. A big reason why I'm making this video today is uh, my frustration level is really to a point of feeling like I'm basically living my own version of The Truman Show. Why don't you let me fix you some of this new Mococo drink? What the hell are you talking about? Who are you talking to? What the hell does this have to do with anything? Tell me what's happening! Well, you're having a nervous breakdown. That's what's happening. You're part of this, aren't you? Now, the reason why this is incredibly infuriating to me is that the customer forward-facing tracking site that you get shows my order went in on March 17th, and then it was put into production on April 27th. Now, it says it can take a few days. Well, it's been 63 days, and in my opinion, 63 is far more than a few. Now, it's showing an estimated delivery date of uh, October 31st of 2021, and where things really start to concern me, this vehicle was produced around that April 27th time frame. So it says it was produced and that it's on hold for microchips. This gets to be far more serious than just being impatient and waiting on a vehicle. The owner's manual specifically for Ford states how to prepare to store your vehicle. And it says if you're planning on storing your vehicle for 30 days or more, the information I have shows that my truck has now been stored for two months. Again, I say my truck because this order has my name tied to it and I've put $1,000 down on this vehicle. And anybody out there can comment now and I can already hear the, the keys clicking away, just cancel your order. Well, Ford's not going to take that truck that I cancel the order for and just run it through a shredder and make a new one for somebody else. They're still going to sell that truck to somebody. So that means that there's a whole bunch of trucks sitting in storage right now. And I want to know, is Ford maintaining these vehicles? vehicles. Again, my truck has been stored now for seemingly two months, and they tell you under various long-term storage may lead to degraded engine performance or failure unless your specific precautions to preserve your vehicle. So if it potentially can cause failure or performance issues, is Ford going to issue extended warranties for all of these vehicles that are just sitting in storage right now to anybody who buys them? I would say their manual specifically says that there's potential ramifications for not doing these certain things. And if Ford can't show that they've been doing the things that they themselves say that you should be doing for a vehicle in storage, I would argue they should offer an extended warranty for any of these vehicles that have been parked in a field. Right now they say, uh, store all vehicles in a dry, ventilated place. Uh, it says, move vehicles at least 25 feet every 15 days to lubricate working parts and prevent corrosion. So that means, theoretically, my truck four times now should have been moved to 25 feet. Now, I'm no genius, but I will say that if vehicles are missing their computer modules, they're very likely not, uh, not running. So if you look at all of these vehicles, even if they are running, they're parked in these environments where moving them 25 feet is virtually impossible. They're all bumper to bumper. So how is Ford moving these vehicles 25 feet every 15 days, the way they have these things kind of shoehorned into these lots. Uh, also, fill the tank with high-grade uh, quality fuel. Any vehicle that I've ever bought brand new comes with very little fuel in the tank. As a matter of fact, the dealership at the PDI stage usually runs and fills that tank up. This is their own manual. This is what they're saying, and I would like evidence to see that this stuff is happening. And if it's not, they certainly can't expect to hold customers uh, to the same standards that uh, weren't held from the manufacturing stage. Start the engine every 15 days and let it run for a minimum of 15 minutes. So who do they have out there right now making sure that these vehicles are all running for 15 minutes every 15 days? Now, they're also saying put your foot on the brake, shift it through the gears, basically make the transmission uh, move through operation. Cover interior trim to prevent fading. These trucks are presumably sitting there without covering on any of the interior stuff, just taking additional wear and tear on the interior that doesn't have to happen. Again, it's a couple months of a truck sitting, not running, just baking in the sun, windows up, hot as can be, 
Probably not the healthiest thing for the interior of the vehicles. Now the hybrid battery systems, this is also an important one. When storing your vehicle for greater than 30 days, the state of charge should be approximately 50%. Uh, and then removing the vehicle from storage. Check under the hood for any foreign material that it may have collected, such as mice or squirrel nests. This is a huge concern that I have because wiring on the interior of these, these vehicles or in the engine bays and all that, I believe it's some sort of soy-based product now that, that coats the wires as opposed to petroleum, if there's not pest controls or rodent controls uh, in place, very, very good possibility. Anybody who has one of these things on order and has to go through the inspection process, please make sure you get up into the hood and underneath the truck and make sure that all the wiring harness, the looms and everything haven't been chewed through because I have heard of manufacturers not covering that stuff under warranty. Now, the 2021 Ford F-150s have a bumper-to-bumper of three-year, 36,000 miles, powertrain, five-year, 60,000 miles, and then the hybrid electric unique components, eight years, 100,000 miles. If these components, let's just say, theoretically, uh, something is... Uh, weakened in a weakened state because of the storage that happened with this vehicle for the first two months of its life that then breaks at uh, prematurely at 40,000 miles outside of your 36,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty. Uh, and I think that's something that could and should be talked about from Ford uh, going forward. Uh, and then to get into the high voltage battery, the high voltage battery will experience gradual capacity loss with time. But again, if the battery experienced some sort of negative side effects from sitting for its first two months, people are going to have a leg to stand on in the future. So ultimately, my biggest gripe here is, look, I understand the situation is uh, coming out of the last year that we had, the, the chip shortages, which I argue is somewhat self-inflicted anyways, because they should have had uh, an understanding of supply chain constraints. But ultimately, yeah, we're in the time that we're in. I've desperately tried to get information from Ford. Nothing, just radio silence. And uh, you start watching things and you see Jim Farley on his uh, Twitter account is out running around hot laps and race cars. He's also riding on the back of sport bikes, uh, tandem rides. And it's like, yeah, all right, great. You're out having a good old time. And I'm not saying that, you know, as a CEO, have all the fun you want, make all the money you want. But at the end of the day, when the rubber meets the road, there's a reason why you see Elon Musk sleeping on the plant floor or hearing these stories of him sleeping in the plants because he was very vested in making sure that when things were going wrong, he was there. He was constantly there. I'm not a huge Tesla fan. I, I, I do ultimately like the vehicles, but I don't like sort of a lot of their right to repair stuff. But I do like their product. And I do think that somebody like Elon Musk being at the plant all the time especially when things are going terribly wrong, shows a lot to the customers. It's all an image thing. And Jim Farley is a marketing guy. He should know that the optics of him out running around in race cars and on bikes when things at the home front are not going great is uh, it's an optics issue. I would love to see a video of Jim Farley out there <laughs> plugging in modules into F-150s and sending them down the road, getting them onto uh, trailers and, and trains uh, to get them out to customers. That, to me, would be a much better social media post than uh, him running around with uh, Vaughn Gittin Jr. Uh, doing hot laps. It just seems like the allocation is screwed up. It seems like nobody's at the helm. I don't know who's making these decisions. Me, as a first-time Ford buyer, I am incredibly frustrated with this process. The only reason why I'm still st sticking with it is because I do know that the product that they're selling is in my opinion, leaps and bounds better than anything else out there. Uh, but the process they're putting me through has not been great. Uh, I bought this truck to produce content for this channel. I bought this as a means to uh, provide incredible content on a product that I thought was very fascinating. And this is kind of what I'm left with is months and months and months of no information. And uh, my frustration level is just beyond boiled over. I'm incredibly disappointed. So Ford, uh, if you could respond or put out some sort of press release, uh, give people some information, I know I would appreciate it. And I for sure know that a bunch of my viewers would appreciate it as well, because there's a lot of them that have found my content who are incredibly unhappy with this process. So with that being said, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to support the channel. I'll see you guys next time.